Oh, I have great wood, all right. And wait until reality sees what I'm going to use it for. <laughs> Oh, hello everyone! Welcome to Regrowth. We have plans today. Oh, we have glorious, glorious plans! Because finally, we have everything we need to start down the path of Thomcraft. We have great wood. We have a wand. We have a bookshelf here to turn into our Thaumonomicon by placing it down and right-clicking it with a wand. The Thaumonomicon is a bit more useful than the Lexica Britannia. Not only does it contain documentation about everything in Thaumcraft, but it also is the portal to researching things. You see that these researchers here are all grayed out, while these ones are blinking. But if I click on them, they don't open up into anything. That's because in order to unlock the ability to create these things, we need to start doing research. And I believe the Thaumonomenom will go right... Why do I have so many of these? Yes, it will go right into there. And I can right-click it and still use it. Excellent. Another book for the binder. The book binder is still behaving oddly sometimes. But yes, in order to do research, I need to make those tables. And you saw earlier that they require, I think, some slabs and some that. Yes. These tables have many, many, many uses. First of all, if we put one down and we hit it with our wand, it will turn into an arcane crafting table. You see it has the slot for the wand here, and we can load it up with materials, and it can use energy from the wand to do special crafting operations that we will sometimes need. The other thing we need is we need two pairs of desks next to each other, and we need to make ourselves... Oops. We need to make ourselves a thing to put on it. I forget what it is called, but we will need a feather, some ink, and a file. Oh, so much great wood. And great wood is actually kind of pretty, too, yeah, if you look at its texture. And it's very, very dark when you make it into planks, though, so... But we get so many saplings, we never have to do all that rune crafting again. <laughs> Good mood. But yes, we need these feathers. We need... Some glass and clay to make a file. I am out of clay, but let's get the ink while I'm here. Oh, I had feathers in here anyway. Mm, yeah. Let's just make a whole bunch of clay. Other way. Okay, and I'm going to need more glass than that. Files have a bunch of uses that we will get into later, but for now... Just know that you get a whole ton of them for very, very cheap. So, we have that, we have that, we have that, and that gives us the scribing tools. That's what it's called. And we take these scribing tools and we right-click it on the table, and that will give us a research station. Oh, yes, so very lovely. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so excited, I forgot to talk about, like, how these things are working. So, <clears throat> Thomcraft Research. Everything out there, everything in the world, is made up of a bunch of elements. You've already seen six of them that we have in our wand, and that I also have these elemental shards of here. Uh, air, 
Earth, Air, Fire, Water, Order, and Entropy. Now, those elements can combine in various ways. If you've ever played Doodle God, it'll feel very familiar. Like, for example, wrong table. For example, Earth and Water equals life. And life and entropy equals death. And death and life equals soul. Exactly like Doodle God. Well, I'm, 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 I'm sure that those recipes aren't in Doodle God, but you get the idea. And we need those research points in order to do the research mini game, which I will have to show you in a little bit. All my books and stuff. And I'm so scatterbrained. Oh yes, I'm also going to need tons and tons of paper. Tons and tons of paper. There we go. There are three pieces of paper. So, the way you conduct research to unlock more recipes is you take a piece of paper, you take your scribing tools, And you take your Thaumonomicon, and you just need to have the paper and scribing tools in your inventory. And let's go to basics here, and let's do this advanced node tapping. I don't think right-clicking it will tell you what it is. You just click it, and it gives you that research note by using a little bit of durability on the scribing tools, which can be repaired with ink. And it gives you these research notes transformed from a sheet of paper. You take those research notes, you put it on the table, you put your scribing tools down too, and I do not know what any of these aspects are yet because I have not discovered them. Now, you can see that my research points are pretty limited, and when, for example, I made life out of earth and water, I lost a point in both. So we need to find ways of earning more aspects. To do that, we're going to need the thing that I needed that shard essence, and thus those shards for. We are going to need a thermometer, which uses a mana lens in this quest. Very sexy. I'll just make that up really quickly. The thermometer will scan items all over the world, and there are dozens and dozens of mods that have been kind enough to add their their uh, their list of items to Thomcraft's dictionary. Yes, there are plans for syrup leaf. But uh, where was I? That also requires iron, doesn't it? Ah, no, that's... Right then, what was... Gold. It requires gold. I am out of gold in this chest, because I moved it all to the Thomcraft chest. Let's just hit the bed while we're here. But yes, you scan an item, and the elements that make it up will be added to your research points, or at least you earn research points based on what the item is made out of. I don't think it's exactly a one-to-one -one conversion. So for example, these grass blocks here have an aspect called erba, which is, I think, life plus earth. And you earn a couple of erba points. You don't just get the basic line elements. Otherwise it would be a real bear combining them all, especially for some of the later researches. Oh, I'm sorry, the shards go on the... Oh, I'm babbling because I'm so happy. Yes, and I have installed the inventory scanning mod. Um, I'll just kind of edit in its proper name here. But what that mod does is it's just a very simple add-on that uh, normally when you get a thermometer, you have to hold it in front of you, and it's very pretty like this. And you have to actually mouse it over something and hold down right-click for a couple of seconds. 
And that is something else I'll have to talk to you about. Uh, that, that thing in the corner that said I had to understand empty things. But anyway, I can just hold this in my hand and scan stuff in my inventory. There you go. So you see, clay consists of aqua and terra. And uh, you can view the aspects that a thing is made out of by holding down shift when you mouse over it. And I gained a research point for both of it when I scanned it. Now, you can't just immediately start scanning everything. In order to get the research points for something that you scan, you need to understand all of the aspects that make it up. You start with just knowledge of the six basic elements. But, for example, if I were to scan those grass blocks over there, before I had discovered the element of vitae over in the research table, I would not be able to scan these. It would say I would need to understand plants, or uh, I would need to understand living things. And because I, you saw earlier that when I tried to scan this great wood, it said I need to understand plants. Well, now I understand plants, so I can understand the element of arbor. And arbor is, I believe, herba and air. No, oh, I, I don't have the research understood yet to... Uh, yeah, that's something I'll talk about. Uh, there's so much to talk about. So much, so much. And census there is... Uh, hold on, I think I actually need to look into Thalmanomicon, because... Yeah, this also will list out what all... Yeah, see? see? So... Once I understood Herba, I was under, able to understand Arbor, because it's just Herba with a base element. And once I was un able to understand Victus, I was able to understand Herba. But before that, I wouldn't have been able to. And before I understood Herba, I wouldn't have been able to understand Arbor, because this Herba is too complex for my feeble little mind. Now, somewhere on the internets, there is a great list of items in a specific order that'll tell you how to scan to unlock all the things. But it's not too hard to just derp your way through. And I will spare you the 15 or 20 minutes I'm going to spend just walking around scanning all the things. Ah yes, and there is the message that the game will give you if something does not actually have aspects programmed into it. Nothing can be learned from this. That just means that you don't get aspects from it. But yes, scanning all the things. Ooh. That's another thing. Sometimes scanning a specific block or learning about a specific type of aspect will unlock hidden research in the Thaumanomenom, so... Yeah, you really do need to scan all the things. Oh, really, witchery is not in Thaumcraft. No, witchery is, just not that which is cauldron. Huh. Okay, I'll talk to you in a minute. Mm -hmm. Scan all the things, scan all the things, scan, 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 scan all the things. Inventory scanning, so very lovely, scan all the things all day. Quick aside, it isn't just blocks that you can scan. You can also scan animals and monsters. Ah, oh, yes, and, uh... If you don't want to install the inventory scanning thing, the way you scan stuff is uh, you can just drop it on the ground, and that's also scannable. You don't, it doesn't have to be like a constructed block. Yes. It even works on liquids. It even works on some seemingly impossible things, like the nether portal itself. Not the obsidian blocks, the actual portal. So yeah, seriously, scan all the things. Okay, now that we have scanned all the things, and this is just going to be scrolling in the background forever, deal with it, we can see what this research requires of us. 
It has all these pretty little aspect images here, and I have to find a way to make them all connect. Now, what do I mean by connect? Well, I can take any one of these aspects on here, and I can plonk it down onto the grid. And if that aspect is related to one of the aspects next to it, it will connect. And by related, I mean either it's one of the things that makes it up, or it can be made out of it. So, for example, uh, this is Precantatio. Precantatio plus air equals aura, aurum. So, I could put down an air, or I could put down a Precantatio. And over next to the Precantatio, I could put down an aurum. You see? Now, Precantatio is void plus magic. I'm just going to link in the energy there. And over by Aurum, I will link magic, and then I will link energy again. Energy is a fairly common one. I'm going to link them both by order, and I'm going to link order there as well. Uh, permutatio is entropy plus order. And... Motus, motion, is air plus order. I can just remember all that. So now that I have a bunch of order sitting all down there, I can link vitreous, vitreous and vitreous, which is a fairly common one. And that is all earth plus order. And they all link up. This is a little bit wasteful, but I was just kind of improvising on camera for it. So... When you link everything up, the uh, research notes turns into this scroll. You take it in your inventory, and there is a means of uh, replicating these things to share with other people. That's why it doesn't just immediately teach you. And you right-click it. You see that research completed, advanced node tapping. And now we can finally find out what advanced node tapping is by... But, but I, but, okay, maybe, maybe the Thaumonomicon breaks in the book binder. Let's, there we go. Usually the process of drawing V's, of drawing V from a node with a wand, I'll talk about that later, is quite slow, but not anymore. Uh, increases the rate of wand filling. Neat. Okay. This is the one that I actually wanted. Okay. And I think I'll just keep the Thalmanomicon out of the book binder from now on, because apparently that breaks down. Ah, yes, you've run out of ink. Yeah, um, the scribing tools take damage not only every time you make a research note, but every time you plunk down a research point on here. And I'm actually going to do something real quick that's going to make things a little bit easier. I'm going to fully repair my, my scribing tool by taking a little bit of ink and just crafting them together. And I am going to toss these scribing tools in the mana pool and then going to toss it in again. This is a special little thing crossed over from Batania. Oh, is the pool not configured to... Uh... There it goes. Yes. Instead of using ink to repair, it just has a little charge of mana in it. Very nice. Convenient. It is nighttime. Those days go by fast. And if I really wanted to be fancy, I could figure out some sort of system for keeping a mana pool up there by the Thomcraft and uh, thing, but these things don't need to be filled all that often. Okay. Oops. But yes, let's fill out this little piece of research and I'll show you a thing that I probably should have researched first. Let's see, that's mind, census, and ordo. Mind is fire plus something. And I know that fire links well to ordo. Uh, census, uh, that's air plus something, I think. It's air plus spirit. Okay, and Lux Light is fire and air, so that links together just fine. 
And I guess I'll just link these by fire and then by potentia. Research expertise, yes. And that. Uh, da, 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 da. You are now able to see what aspects you need to combine to create an aspect you are hovering over. Yeah, see? Uh, so, like, what's one that I've showed you before? Life, water, and earth. Life equals water plus earth. Yeah, that is very convenient. Now let me take my thing. And I am just going to be doing all of the research for a little while. At least I'm going to be doing all the basics. I think you get the idea of how this minigame goes. I just unlocked my first piece of forbidden knowledge. This means that once I accept this knowledge into my head, it will give me a little bit of something called warp. Warp is kind of Lovecraftian, go mad from the revelation type things. And the more that you have, the more random bad things will happen to you, and the more often they will happen to you. So, it's a little bit of a trade-off. That being said, all the best things give you warp. And there are ways of dealing with warp, so... Ooh, that noise tells you you just did something so bad, but so good. One thing that uh, you might run into is sometimes you will reach a research topic, and instead of seeing click to produce a research node, it just says click to purchase, and it has those aspect symbols. That's an easy research, and so long as you just uh, give it those aspects, it just straight up unlocks for you. There's a couple of those hidden around. Oh, uh, just something I noticed on the little scroll of things. You notice that it, well, you can't really see it because it's purple. You notice how it says you have gained permanent warp and you have gained warp. That is actually a difference. Permanent warp is, like the name implies, permanent. Outside of a few cheaty things, and I mean literally cheat, like console commands, you cannot get rid of it. But warp, regular warp, can actually be dealt with. There is a third type, temporary warp, which is like really, really light stuff, and it is very, very easy to get rid of. And those are the three types of warp. <sighs> okay, my head is heavy with brand new knowledge. And more importantly, I'm running out of some of the base aspects. So, let's put this knowledge that we have gained to use. Yes, I have so many new things in the book to go for. Yes, 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 yes. Let's look at our quest book and let's see what it wants us to do. It wants us to make some goggles of revealing. It wants us to make a better wand. It wants us to make silverwood, which is going to have to wait. And it wants us to make a crucible. A crucible is the basis of Thomcraft's alchemy. It's very simple to make. You just make a, a uh, vanilla cauldron. You take your wand and you right-click it, just like a bookcase. Makes that pretty little noise and it becomes all engraved. In order to work, the crucible requires to be filled with water, so I'm just going to hook it into the pipe here, and it requires a heat source beneath it. So I think I am going to put it... yeah, just put it in the corner. Might as well. Put that down there. Do I still have a... Uh, no, I lost my flint and steel somewhere. I think I might have accidentally tossed it into a fire or something. Now, the way the crucible works makes use of all the scanning we have done. When we throw something into a working crucible, it melts down into its base aspects. I'll show you what I mean. Light the netherrack. Just put that down so I can put that here. And I need some water pipes, excuse me. I'll just 
get a bucket just for quick demonstration purposes. Give it a moment to heat up. It has to be bubbling. There we go. I believe that also having a lava source block underneath it also works. And I would do that, but eh, then I just get blooping noises instead of crackling noises, and there's already a fire over there. So, and also, yes, standing in boiling water is bad for your health, so don't do that. Anyway, um, I'll show you in the book that one thing we can do that you might have seen around is we can use this thing to make thaumium. You see, in the book it says, toss iron in with four precantatio in the cauldron. So, these great wood logs have one precantatio and three arbor. So if I take four of them, and I take a piece of iron, if I toss these great wood logs in, it makes a bubbly, bubbly noise. And if I have my thermometer on me, Oh, no, it doesn't actually show that. That's just goggles of revealing. Excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. If I toss all four of these great wood logs in, you see the water gets a little bit purplish looking. If I... You know? One of the precantatio must have melted. It will be much easier to see what's going on if I make some goggles of revealing. So I am just going to empty the magic out of the cauldron by sneak right-clicking with a wand, and this might create something nasty. Yes, it did. It created a little flux goo. This is nasty stuff. If you leave it for too long, it starts to pollute the environment in various bad ways. And if you step in it, it makes a squishy noise, and it gives you flux flu, which causes all magic with wands to cost more. Thankfully, you can just clean it up by putting a block onto it. Anyway, let me get my water pipes so that I don't have to fill that cauldron by hand all the time. And let me get the materials for Goggles of Revealing. Uh, one thing to note is that if I tried to click this recipe before I did the research for them, any eye would not show me the recipe. But now that I have the research, and it's a very pretty looking screen, isn't it? You see that all I need is some leather, some gold, two more thermometers, and it's a uh, arcane work table recipe, so it needs these V. A little bit of everything, but slightly less order and entropy. So let us make all of that. The Goggles of Revealing are a very useful tool. They reveal some unseen things that you might have seen around. In fact, I believe I ran into one a couple episodes back when I was in the Nether. You saw me pause and like the world kind of went wonky colored for a little bit and I kind of zooped back and forth on it. There should be one around here. Because hidden from the sight of mortal eyes, for the most part, are these things called aura nodes, and that's what I ran into. When I get too close to it, it's going to cause weird render problems. These are little holes into the realm of magic that are just in the fabric of reality. And you can use these things to fill up your wand with V. You see that this thing... Oh, let me back off a little bit so it shows up better. It still can't really see it. This thing has, I think that says 37 air and 41, uh, 41 perditio in it. And this wand only holds 25 of each. So if I was missing some, I could come up here and I could right-click on it and it would drain out into my wand. And the nodes will slowly recharge over time. So one thing you do as a aspiring thaumaturgist is you walk around and you find all those nodes, and they are a very good source of research points. And you keep a catalog of them for when you need to recharge your wand quickly, and you don't just want to kill a bunch of monsters to get the aspect orbs that they drop. 
Later on, well, actually now I have the research for it. I just need to build all the infrastructure for it. But later on, you get the ability to start moving nodes around and doing fun things with them. And you can even turn them to like constant magic laser sources to power various magical devices. They are very neat. Now, I was building some goggles of revealing, yes. And uh, just by the way, the arcane work table also works just fine as a regular table. So I'm going to need four pieces of gold, and I'm going to need four of any color shard. And I believe the pattern goes like this and like that. Yes. And the other mana. Okay, and I believe the pattern went like that, like that, and it needs some more gold. Now, you see that this V cost is not exactly what we saw in NEI. This is like 5.5 and 5.3, whereas NEI claims it only costs 5 and 3. That's because we are using a very, very crappy wand. If I shift click on, if I shift hover over it, hold down shift, you see it says 110% V cost? Yeah. That's because this is just the crappy little wand that you build entirely out of mundane materials. But it is good enough to get us all of this. And also you see these goggles of revealing say they have V discount 5%. If I was wearing them just on their own, it would offset some of that cost from uh, this wooden wand. I believe that all uh, bonuses are additive rather than multiplicative. And a really nice thing about the Goggles of Revealing is they have very vast cross-mod compatibility. If I just take these, I now get a Mana Steel Helmet of Revealing, which does not have a V offset cost, but still has the 10% uh, mana reduction on tools and rods, and still does all the revealing. Also, kind of has a different... oh, no? I could have sworn this thing looked different. Oh well, it looks exactly the same. But yeah, so long as you are wearing goggles of revealing, everything that you would see through your thermometer is revealed to you. These nodes are now visible when before, if I take the thing off, yeah, you can even see in the background there, on, off, on, off, on, off. And when I hover over it, and that render error, I need, I'm going to try playing around with Optifine between episodes. Anyway, when you hover over it, you get a list of the aspects on it. Neat. And more importantly, now that we are wearing these things, when I toss things into the crucible, and I forgot to get those water pipes, when I toss things into the crucible, I will see all the aspects that are inside of it. Yes, we have a node right on top of our base, too. You've probably seen this thing a couple of times. And they are even very faintly visible, even when you just are relying on your own sight. There's a ton of water pipes. Hmm. And yes, of course, uh, putting pipes on these things does in fact fill it up just fine. These pipes need to pressurize. Magical food is so good. Sometimes I eat more of it than I intend to, I don't know why. Um, I got some of these ender pearls and emeralds and stuff just from uh, one of the quest rewards that I went through between cuts there. I cleared out like, um, it just gave me some of this for making a thermometer. It gave me some of these common treasures, which are just little loot bags, and that's what gave me the ender pearls and emeralds for making an arcane work table. It gave me some more great wood for making great wood. And uh, it gave me some iron for making the iron wand. And we got some... Uh, water cans are just like single-use buckets, I think. And let me get a bucket on my thing. Yeah, I think if I use that up, 
Oh, I can't actually put it on the ground either. It just empties into an inventory. But I think that um, it just completely destroys itself, so it's kind of a crap reward. And Goggles of Revealing gives me more of those common treasures to show off. So if I um, sort my inventory so I can tell what I'm getting, you right-click on it, it makes a glingle glingle noise. You get some of these gold coins, which are equivalent to uh, gold nuggets, except they have lucrum instead of um, metallum as an aspect. Uh, metallum is kind of the universal metal aspect, and almost all metal nuggets have it. Looks like I just got a bunch of gold coins. Okay. Oh, and I got a potion of night vision, which I don't think I've scanned. Mm hmm. Might as well. Hmm. Everything very slightly brighter. Okay, so we have a cauldron that's full of water. I'm going to call it a cauldron. I'm just going to keep on making that mistake. Yeah, as I alluded to before, if you throw something in there, it now shows up. And now that we have four Precantasio in there, we should be able to throw in a piece of... And we get the Thaumium, but all of that Arbor stays behind. Now, if you load up too many aspects into a Crucible, it will explode into Flux Goo. And over time... Aspects break down into a random one of their elements. Like you saw there, the Arbor broke down into Erba. It's made of Erba and Air. And now the Arbor just broke down into Air. And then that Erba broke down into Victus. And now it's, it's all just very... So you want to try and get your Crucible crafting as perfect as possible. There is something a little bit cheaty we can do, though. And I'm not sure if this will entirely work, but I've just read about it. I think if you have something partially blocking the block above the Crucible, it cannot actually place the Flux Goo. And, um, yeah, even if I clear it with my wand, which I think is guarantees makes you either Flux Goo or Flux Gas, you're just fine. But I'm not going to do that. That's cheating. We have to learn to love the goo. Love it in very big quotes. Anyway, we now have Thomium. Which is another thing I can scan. And you notice you don't get all that four precantasia you put into it back. But, um... Thaumium, as we saw before, is a better mining level than Alumite. And I believe it is the last gate we need to finish that nether quest, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that right now. I have other things I want to do. Uh, Thaumium is also relatively useful as a tinker's tool because it uh, every piece of Thaumium on your tool will give you another modifier you can put on your tool. And I think there's a special bonus if enough pieces of your tool are made of it. So that is Thaumium. It wants us to make five. You know what? Why not? So five of that would require four more. So I need 16 more great wood. And we need four of those. And we can just do this in a batch by tossing in all the great wood. Oh, you see the uh, the cauldron gets a little bit dangerously full. Toss in all that. And then we just make the goo. Oh, we make the gas. Flux gas is even friendlier. If you live in a roofed-in area, yeah, it'll, it'll build up on your ceiling, but just out here in the sky, it'll eventually reach the ceiling and, and it'll be voided. Goodbye, flux gas. Goodbye. It needs all five in my inventory. Neat. Oh, and it even gave me a thaumium tool rod so I can demonstrate. I think I'll put that on the pickaxe and give it some more speed. Yes. Uh, no modifiers remaining. One modifier remaining. And it doesn't take 
it actually gains a little bit of durability. I'm not sure what the handle modifier, 1.18. And I think the alumite one on there is 1.1. So yeah, Thonium is a pretty good handle. And we will have to make tons and tons of it. There are easier ways to do alchemy that we will unlock as we go, though. And next it wants us to make some Nitor. That's another little good base thing in the Thomcraft. Nitor, I believe. I could look it up in the Thaumanomenon, but it's easier just to use any eye. Yeah, it requires Potentia, Ignis, and Lux. And it uses a Glowstone as the acceptor. Oh, I am so close to Golems, I can taste it. Of course, I think I'm going to want Mechanism Pipes before I start automating all the crops, but it will be so nice to at least automate this field so I don't have to worry about the steam boiler getting cold and... And you know, I probably could have waited on building that steam boiler. I've literally just been doing magic for a couple of episodes. But... I like having it. It's kind of a nice centerpiece. And eventually I'm going to be making lasers, eventually I'm going to be making heavy industry and getting started on mechanism. And it'll be nice to know that I'll have a long time to go before I start tapping out that source of power. It's good to have. Oh right, I needed coal and charcoal, excuse me. Oh yes, another thing. Between episodes, I completed out the last Batania runes. These are the Seven Runes of Sin. Most of these, well, all of them, are just one of the seasonal runes, or, or one of the seasonal runes, one of the elemental runes, and two mana diamonds. They're all very easy, but they cost tons and tons of mana. Also, I derped on the Alfheim portal. I forgot to toss through living wood to get dream wood. Dream wood has a bunch of uses, but the most prominent one is it can be combined with elementium to make the second tier of mana spreader that you see here. And these things are much, much faster. Yes. There is a third tier of mana spreader, but that is going to require killing an end boss. And I am going to want to prepare a lot more for that. Let's just bring a stack of coal with us. Because that is going to have lots of uses for Thomcraft. <laughs> okay, let's do a little bit of meth. I forgot the glowstone. Okay. Oh, I forgot to scan glowstone. I probably forgot to scan glowstone blocks, too. Yep. Can I decraft that? No, I can't. Okay, so... It's three per... So... We need three coal to get two. And we brought ourselves enough torches for ten. So, because it is three lux, right? Yes, it is. So, we have two, four, six, eight, ten. And then we need the ten glowstone. Okay, and then we just, oops, derp, derp, derp. we just toss that in, we toss those in, purple, we toss those in, and we get our 10 Nitor. Nitor is a very fancy Thaumcraft torch, essentially. 
except it also has another use. It can be used as a heat source. It isn't it pretty? It's big. I'll, I'll, I'll make one up here. Yes. They're such pretty glowy fireballs. Ooh. But they work as a heat source for crucibles. And actually, I wonder... Because I think Thomcraft has been around for longer than witchery. Wait for that to stop boiling. Do it do. No, it do not. Oh, well. We almost had no more fires making noises near us. <sighs> but yeah, other than that, it is just a light source. Oh, let me get ten more of it. Okay, and next it would want us to make red crystal, which I didn't actually research yet. And it wants us to make a better wand. This gold-banded great wood wand. So, that's going to require gold caps, which is easy enough. No, does that have to be made in here? Yes, it does, because it requires a little bit of magic. These two gold caps. And let's just keep these nuggets. Yeah, you see, these are metallum, these are lucrum. They're otherwise or dictionaried. And I believe it wants us... It goes like this. Yes, that makes the great wood rod with a little bit of perdizio. But we have a problem here, because to combine it, we need... Oh, well, it doesn't need that much magic at all. Neat. So, you see, this wand has a capacity of 25. This wand has a capacity of 50. And when we mess over it... I think I need to put it in there to see. No? I guess it needs a little bit of magic inside of it to view that. But this thing should also give us a better bonus. Now... Caps can be mixed, or wands can be mixed and matched. For example, if for whatever reason I didn't have the magic to make um, the gold caps, and I wanted more V storage right here, right now, I could make the metal caps and put them on the great wood core. But the thing is, the core determines the capacity of the wand, and the caps determine the V cost. So if I were to put iron caps on the Great Wood Wand, I would have the wooden wand's 110% cost, as versus just the regular baseline cost that it has. And actually, since it's becoming night, I am going to take both wands with me, and I am going to farm a couple of monsters. So I will talk to you later. You might or might not remember from quite a long time ago, Brain Jerky. I told you it gives you a couple of points for Thomcraft's research. Well, that's what I meant. I have a Brain Jerky here. If I eat it, you see it gives me two points for Terra and Aqua that I can use for researching. Now, you don't necessarily want to jerk all of your brains, because eating a zombie brain, just as it is, has, uh, it will give you warp. And there are a couple of reasons coming up in the end game why you might want to warp yourself. So, we were up all night, and I got these wands, a smattering of things for both of them. Let's just keep that on hand. And what was it we were doing now? We were going to make... Actually, you know what? I think that's a pretty good place to stop for today. I haven't actually been trying to drown you all in a, in a bunch of hour-long episodes. I've just been over-filming. So, next 
time on regrowth, we will get into infusion crafting, which we need to finally get our golems. I'll see you then.